Next, let's talk the current state of retail with the former CEO of Dunkin' Donuts, Robert Rosenberg, joining us. Hello, how are you, Robert? I'm great, how are you? Great, too. Good to have you. I'm excited to speak with you. Let's let's jump right into it. Hundreds of Dunkin' locations will close this year. Since you were running things, how do you see, how's the industry changed? Well, the industry's changed in lots of ways, but I, I don't really uh, uh, draw a lot of conclusions from the few stores that Dunkin' is closing. Uh, right now, they are fundamentally uh, reordering the brand, and they are uh, designing it in a way to be able to make a fuller offering of all the things that they sell. Uh, the industry, I think, has pivoted, most in the industry have pivoted incredibly well to the new um, realities of the pandemic. Uh, those companies that uh, provided convenience to the consumer by way of drive throughs and delivery and online ordering, those that have adapted to social media and understand it, fundamentally those that have kept up and invested in the digitization of the world, I think are not only going to survive the pandemic, but I think on the other end, when things clear up, they are fundamentally going to thrive and be bigger and even more successful than in the past. Yeah. But the pandemic is going to leave some pain, I'm afraid, for a lot of independents and those companies that weren't able to pivot as well. Yeah, every industry is making its own adjustments, but it isn't just Dunkin' Donuts. It's so many of our favorite stores. Do, do you think the industry will turn around anytime soon? I think that they already are. Most of the larger chains and the independents that were able to pivot, as I suggested earlier, have already made that. The stock market already reflects that fact, that they're back to the pre-pandemic highs in terms of multiples. Uh, the fact is that their customer counts are down somewhat, some 10, some 20 percent, but their average check is up because more and more consumers are comfortable taking their meals from restaurants at home. They find that convenient. And I think that's likely to be a, a trend that well may last well beyond the pandemic. I think consumers are, are, are finding this new way that's been sort of telescoped and accelerated by virtue of the pandemic has been more convenient and, and for some customers, not all, but for some customers, a better way to access the restaurants and the products that they like. So Robert, switching gears a little bit, uh, talk me through this. Someone who wants to, to do what you did and turn a family donut shop into a nationwide franchise, how doable is that for somebody who sits and has that dream? What do they need to do? Persistence. <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple of things. No, number one, I think, uh, most successful people, entrepreneurs, people who go into business and create businesses generally do know their trade. It's an 80-20 rule. There are some serial entrepreneurs, but, but, but for the most part, I would say 80% of the people have worked at least three to five years in their industry, uh, learning the trade, learning the metrics, learning where the gaps are, where they can build a business that serves a purpose that provides a sustainable competitive advantage. And no advantage is sustainable forever. So it requires an agile team to be able to keep reconceptualizing, making new offers to the consumer, keeping a keen eye on the customer and the competition. It is always changing. So it's, it's it, and unfortunately, at least for me, it wasn't a smooth ride. I tell my children, life is lumpy. And that was clearly true in, in our business life. Um, the first five years, when I was just 25 and took over the family business called Universal Food Systems, uh, uh, luckily I focused, uh, uh, there were eight little businesses, I focused on one and sold the others off or closed them. And that one business was Dunkin' Donuts, sort of a diamond in the rough. We fixed it and went public. And then the second five years, lo, lo and behold, uh, I began to broaden the business too much, way beyond its capabilities, yeah. made the very same mistake. I got fired, luckily talked my way back in. The point is, it's a long journey to do that, and it's going to be filled with some setbacks. And it really requires some knowledge of the business, a love of the product, a love of the business, a great team, and the ability to be able to you know, pick yourself up and keep going. So, Robert, if I ask you to just narrow it down to one sentence, so what's your biggest piece of advice for young entrepreneurs? Listen and keep learning and growing. It's a long journey, and it's going to be filled with lots of lessons from lots of people in lots of places. And that's one, one of 
the ways you keep growing. It's just to keep keep two ears and one mouth to listen twice as much as you talk. Love that. Can we read more about that in your book? Absolutely. The book's Whoa. available now, published. No, there's the there's the cover. Uh, around the world, around the corner to around the world, and it really is a, a buffet of ideas setbacks and successes over 35 years i think there's something in it for everybody buffet of our ideas are they just as delicious as your donuts <laughs> absolutely all right <laughs> it's, <a different laughs> it's food for the mind food Thanks, for man. the mind i love it i love it thank you so much for joining us robert thanks for the invitation pleasure all right. to be with you bye-bye